Hello everyone, this is Denise. Welcome back to a new art haul. I was waiting on my sketch box to show up and one of the items here, this one here, um, I had so many people say, oh my god, have you seen this? And I'm like, oh yes, I have it. But I'm waiting on my sketch box to come in. So sketch box came in yesterday, so now I'm going to show you all the goodies that I have collected up to share with you for this month. I kind of like doing these the once a month because then I can just kind of gather up what I've had come in throughout the month rather than trying to sneak out little art hauls in the middle of the month. One of my very favorite finds um, this month is uh, uh, some books and um, a couple of these were recommended by some of our lovely people in our in our art tribe and this one I'm probably most excited about because this is creative abstract watercolor right up our alley and it's by um, Essel Esadolo Design, Kate Rebecca Leach. And this lady's on Instagram and she has the most inspiring Instagram for watercolor and texture and pattern. And now she's wrote a book. And so this book is gorgeous and it kind of takes you through creating some abstract watercolor and then adding pattern to it and just really creating some lovely designs. And it's a brand new book. It just came out maybe a month ago. I got it right after it was published um, off of Amazon. But it's so lovely because I already love just kind of looking at the beautiful things that she creates on her Instagram and now we get to see a breakdown of her lovely pieces and you know get some of her advice for lovely abstract watercolor and pattern. So this book I love. I've looked at it a couple times. I've really enjoyed it. Highly recommended. Creative Abstract Watercolor by Kate Rebecca Le Leach. And I will, of course, post a link below the video. And then let's see if I can move some of this stuff. Um, another one is recommended by one of our people in our group. And I believe it's this one. And this one came up as a recommendation when I bought this one. <laughs> so this is Painting Imaginary Flowers um, by Sandrine Pellisser, P-E-L-I-S-S-I-E-R. -S -S and this is basically um, where you paint a, a crazy background and then you simplify it into a pattern or a shape or design by whiting out some of it and creating some negative space so that what you're left with is something lovely and then patterns on top of that. Um, so another really lovely idea book if you like abstract florals, which I do. Um, this is fun ideas and she uses um, supplies that I wouldn't normally have picked to use to do these and to get some cool patterns and so um, definitely interesting to look and see how different people achieve the pieces that they're creating especially if they're different than um, what you might have tried in your own art. So this was a cool book. I like having this one and just thought I would share that with you. Um, painting imaginary flowers and then this book came up as a recommendation um, when I bought this one expressive flower painting by Lynn Whipple and it again is um, just a different take on creating some crazy pattern and background and maybe having that you know flower abstract in the mix and you know sometimes when I've already had something in my mind maybe for a class or an art thing that I was already kind of thinking of you know more materials and things for research and exploration kind of come into my my field and so I've already kind of wanted to maybe do my own version of you know wonky crazy abstract flowers and then so I feel like I'm kind of in that research looking at different ideas figuring out what that means for me kind of stage and so these books have been delightful and then this book, this is a book month, and you know if you've seen my studio tour that I got a lot of books and I just keep adding to it and pretty soon the bookcases that I added to this room are just not going to fit more books and I can't help myself. I love books. This one was um, came up in my, my um, 
my Facebook as a recommended post, um, or it might have been on the Apple News app um, in the interior design section, uh, like 10 or 15 best coffee table books for your house kind of post. <laughs> and of course, I'm like, ooh, what do they have in there? And this is a room of her own, Inside the Homes and Lives of Creative Women by Robin Lee. And that immediately caught my attention because number one, it wasn't $150. I got a used version for $17. And number two, I love looking at the creative space of other lady artists and designers and just seeing, you know, what it is that their space looks like and what they surround themselves with. I have um, a degree in the field of interior design and I spent years and years and years in kitchen and bath design with that um, before I went into this creative business. And so I've always really felt like you can get a sense of somebody when you see their space and the objects and things that they surround themselves with and I just found the book very interesting and inspiring and because you know a lot of these creative designing people are not here in the states they're overseas they've got these houses that have beautiful historical details that kind of add to you know the the decorating and the styles that they've created inside the houses and I just find that fascinating and so this is a gorgeous book and it was a great purchase. And if you're on Amazon, they have a used book section, basically, because um, this book's been out for a while. And, you know, you can get this for a pretty decent price. I got mine for $17 and some change. And so I don't know if they're still going to have any at that price. But out of all the ones in that article I read, this one was actually in stock somewhere and reasonable. And I'm like, ooh. I like that book. So very fun book. I thought I would just show that to you just in case. Um, A Room of Her Own Inside the Homes and Lives of Creative Women by Robin Lee. Okay, so this right here, going to do a little unboxing that's a tiny bit different than the art unboxings. This, I'm already obsessed with the Archer and Olive um, acrylograph pens, which are fine tipped acrylic paint pens that came in some sketch boxes that introduced me to this brand. And so if you go on their website, they have subscription boxes. And so, you know, <laughs> automatically thought, ooh, what's in their subscription box? Um, but their website is, an, is a journal website. So if you like to journal, write down your thoughts, keep pretty journal books and things like that, this kind of box would appeal to you. I will admit, I'm not a journaler. I wanted this because it was another box of yummy surprises um, that I could order and just see like, ooh, maybe I need it. Um, my next door neighbors are obsessed with Archer, Archer and Olive because they are journalers and they do the bullet journaling and the decoration of the journals and all that kind of stuff. And so they saw this and they were like, oh my gosh, best box ever. So if you're into journaling, bullet journaling, any of that, and you think, ooh, that looks interesting, I'm gonna show you what came in the box because it really is outstanding. And this is, I think, like a quarterly subscription box, and then they have some other monthly little boxes of decorations and things that they have. Um, and then they have items that you can just purchase. Um, this was probably the nicest quarterly subscription box I've ever gotten, and everything's beautiful. Beautiful. And what I already gave away one item that came with um, some stickers and I gave that away. Um, but this box came with the most beautiful ruler. Like I just want to, you know, put the ruler on my desk just to stare at it. So that is super lovely. It also came with um, a set of the acrylograph markers in some nice new colors so that was exciting because you know I'll use that it also came with the most lovely pen to be able to write with and this is the kind of pen that you fill with inks so it also came with three gorgeous ink colors I think one is a um, kind of like an olive green and one is a teal and Oh, there we go. There's the colors. So it comes with three ink colors for your pen. And of course, I can use these in my art if I want. 
but I love this beautiful pin and in the base of it you just kind of fill up the reservoir um, with the ink and then you when you use that up you can fill it up with a different color um, so this is a gorgeous fountain pen. I love it. See, see already, and I think this box, I think I paid $75 for this, but you can see it really is such gorgeous stuff. It also came with some beautiful washi tapes. I think it might have had a fourth washi tape, but I gave that to the neighbor that I gave the stickers to. But look how pretty these washi tapes are. If you like um, using those in your journaling or just to have those are gorgeous and extra wide i love that and then it came with um, some art journals and they came in lovely boxes um, so this green one look how beautiful this is um, is a dot journal so you can do whatever it is that you'd like to do on the pages and you know do your bullet journal things in here and it's got a little envelope in the back to store anything extra that you need to keep i love journals that come with the band to close it so that one is particularly beautiful um it also came with so this one came with three journals so you can see how this is a journal box for people that truly want to up their art journal art journal <laughs> their, their, their journal game so this one's really beautiful too it's got like a velvety cover got the band to close it and it has the most gorgeous deckled edges on it I mean it's truly beautiful dot grid again on this one I wish one of those was a line grid and then of course the lovely ribbon in it um, so that's beautiful I wish one of those was a line journal um, because I, I thought I like lines and then there's a third one in here and you can see how pretty these boxes are I, I hate to I, I haven't taken any of these out of their stuff because I don't want to throw out the boxes I'm going to use them for something and then look at this third journal in this quarterly box is a wrapped one with a beautiful I think it's vegan leather so we'll call it vegan leather I'm not positive anymore I could look at that thing there though um, and it's got lovely kind of uh, parchment colored pages and a ribbon in here to keep your wherever you're at in the journal and then it's got the, the wraparound piece and then you can secure it that way so another lovely journal in this box so you can see how gorgeous this box turned out so if you like to journal in any way um, I highly recommend the Archer and Olive journal boxes and it does come with a card letting you know what's in here um, it's a naturalist notebook the field notes sketchbook the acrylographs fountain pen and ink set leafy notebook with a vegan leather cover yeah stickers um, the stickers I gave to my neighbors already because they're into the stickers in their bullet journaling decorative paper tape and scalloped edge ruler so and then it came in this lovely presentation everything was in a really pretty box but I couldn't wait to look at this when it came in this was the spring one um, so I think I got it late March um, and I just decided to show it to you in case you're a journaler or you kind of am, would it be interested in something like that. Um, I thought you'd like to see that. All right, let's get down to the art goodies. <laughs> That's so much good stuff. Okay, so this one I'm definitely excited about. This is brand new. It's the Kiritake Genzai Tambi Granulating Watercolors. It's a set of five. They all look the same color when you open this and there is a blank one um, in here for water for you to mix it with water they look very similar in color but when you mix these with water they start to granulate out into different colors and you see the separations and they do really cool things and I saw a video this week because I've had this for about two weeks I had somebody stop by a video and say oh my goodness have you seen these and I'm like ooh 
Ooh, we need these. Um, and then right after that, maybe a couple days after that, I saw Diane Antone do a video with some lovely uh, dragonflies she was painting. And she did a review of this set because uh, apparently they sent her these paints and I did not, I bought everything on my table. I purchased myself. Nobody sent it to me. Um, but I just, you just know I love the Kiritake things. But she did a nice about a half hour video on um, this collection that I'm going to link for you below the video so that you can get a good look at it. Since I've got so much stuff I'm showing today, it wouldn't be as in depth. Um, review of the set but so I'm gonna link that below um, but they're super cool and I'm very excited to see like what can we do with these and I also actually got a, another watercolor set um, that I've looked at for a while and these may still be in their little wrappers I don't know and this is a set of vintage watercolors um, that are in vintage pastel colors um, and I've seen them before and and really thought oh so cool this is called watercolor confections and these are vintage pastels um, so of course I'll link that below for you but I was kind of excited because it is some lovely vintage colors and I think I will enjoy playing in this little vintage pastel set of colors <laughs> okay now all the wrap stuff so I want to show you real quick this package here is a grab bag um, which another viewer said grab bag alert on one of my videos so thank you um, this is a grab bag from St. Louis Art Supply and I like their stuff because they have interesting things that they get in that are kind of unusual it's where I very uh, first got um, introduced to the Kuretake brass nib that I love so much and you've seen in you know dozens and dozens of my videos um, I have it sitting over here on my desk somewhere here we go um, that yummy little nib that that's the only place that I would found that carries that um, and so I love looking to see what they got and they're usually very expensive but they have these grab bags for $15 and so I've never ordered a grab bag from them and you might go look on their website I don't know if they've still got them or not but keep an eye out when some of these art things do grab bags because they're totally worth it and I haven't opened it so let's see what we got for $15 from St. Louis Art Supply so we got a stamp of little bunnies <laughs> you know what's real funny this is a little um iPhone icon of the two little dancing bunny girls and it's like a fun little joke between me and um, one of the people I used to do trips with and stuff somehow we got on a little bunnies dancing thing and that we were sending that little emoji back and forth to each other so that is hilarious <laughs> all right let's see what else is in our grab bag oh my gosh all kinds of stuff in our grab bag okay grab bags empty so let's see what we got we got some Sennelier uh, Rive Gouache. Hope I said that right. Who knows? In, oh, comes in 60 colors. And we got a lovely red hue. And I love gouache, so that's a good pick. Two stamps, fun. We got a test tube of blank. I don't know. I can use that for something. I don't know what. And then we have a Holbein Artist watercolor in sap green. Great color. Got a little ink pad for our little stamps. And then we've got some permanent markers here. This is Art Alterations permanent marker. And a lavender. These look kind of remind me a nice blue. It's kind of remind me of like a really nice Sharpie. Oh yeah, okay, good. Those are good. I like those. Derwent line marker. Nice. And then we've got an ink pen. I think this is a oh yeah, an ink pen in blue. Okay. And a sticker. <laughs> uh, with a vintage camera, maybe. I don't know what that is. Vintage camera. Alright, so $15 grab bag. That's interesting. I'm not sure I would have known that they had any of these items so that is a fun 
little collection because really just the Holbein watercolor and the Sennelier gouache might have been $15 worth of stuff right there. So good job. St. Louis Art Supply. If you want to check out what they've got or if you want to just see if they've got any grab bags left, that was a very interesting mix of stuff. Good job. <laughs> okay, so this, so I don't know if you watch um, the artist on YouTube, her name is Sean Petit, but I saw an art video of hers pop up on my homepage on YouTube, my suggestion feed saying, hey, we think you'll like this and I was like oh okay and it was a abstract flower painting so I'll try to remember to link that video below for you also um, because it's genius it showed me a way to use stencils and masks that I never even thought of and I don't know maybe all of you already know um, the secret in there but she creates her own stencils and then on that YouTube video, um, she just did the most wonderful thing. Um, and so I ordered lots of stencils. Look at this. Look at this Moroccan tile. Like, you know, I have a, a Moroccan-y kind of um, tile that I use that I love. And this one could be my new favorite. Um, and then I like some leaves. I think that was part of the abstract flower one. And look at that smaller Moroccan design. I love it. And I just ordered myself a whole big bundle of lovely stencils from her website. And then she's some of these are the mask and the outline. So I've got the lovely mask that goes with these, which is super fun because I just ordered all the ones I thought I would love because with the flowers, genius genius and now i want to just cut some more of these myself out of maybe some upo paper but basically what she does in that video is takes some tape and makes herself like i'm guessing it's tape i'm just kind of surmising because what it looks like but makes herself like a little tape handle kind of like this is what it looks like and then you stick these on one side of the stencil and now you can paint on this side and stamp the paint down to make flowers and i'm like whoa genius and so you can put a couple different colors of paint on the one side and stamp that down and that's a really fun abstract flower bundle thing so i was like whoa my mind is blown I need the stencils. I need to show all of you this genius technique with the stencils. So I'm going to link that video below because again today I might not get into all the lovely details of creating that painting like she did, but I wanted to definitely throw this out there that it's a great stencil. She's got a great number of stencils that I was like, oh, I just went gaga over. Look at all these. Another one where we've got a geometri uh, geometric mask there. Um, so I love that. So a lot of good patterns and designs. And now I want to take some Yupo paper and make my own flower masks and have some more things to stamp down. So it's amazing the things that you'll see that will give you great ideas. And then for some reason I just loved the birds. So I got some birds. <laughs> And a few more flower masks um, because I'm really glad that in hers she included the part she cut out and the part um, and the stencil part itself. I'm glad to have these masks included. Glad she did that. And just some more fun patterns. So I was super excited and so delight delighted to come across that video. Um, Love that. And here's the center of those. So I will link her website. It's not an affiliate, not an affiliate or nothing for her. I just loved it. And I like sharing beautiful, interesting, creative things that, you know, uh, an artist uh, handmade and did for themselves. I like supporting these little tiny businesses just a little bit, you know. 
it's no competing with the other people who are making art out there. And I like to rise up. Like that's the last one. That's just a piece of cardboard. I like to share and I kind of think a, a rising boat lifts all tides. And so definitely thought you would like to see um, these lovely things. And I didn't think, don't think I pulled that out, but I've got some cool words and some circles. So these were super fun. This was from Sean Petit's website. I'll link the website and the video that I saw below because let me tell you, it was genius. I was like, whoa, my mind is blown. I can't wait to play with those. So those were delightful. Okay. Yeah, more stencils. <laughs> this is the Stencil Girl monthly uh, stencil club and I'm, I'm not an affiliate for this either I just like it um, and we'll see what we got this month all right stencil club this would be the April um, the April ones look at that okay now this one I cannot wait to share in my uh you see it if i do it nope i cannot wait to use this in my art journal i love that like i love love that <laughs> and then look at this one that's pretty darn cool too this is a little more abstracty floral thing with a little ladybug up here okay this could be a favorite month of mine that i've gotten from them um, so yeah, this is the April 2024 uh, set, and I'm super excited about that one. So, all right, big, big, big win for me on the stencils. Good job. Good job, stencil girl. <laughs> and we're down to the sketch box. Let's see what we got this month. Just came. I was like going to the mailbox yesterday saying, please come today. Please come today. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, no. I see markers. Uh-oh. <laughs> Might be a marker box. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we got here. In the marker box. Okay. Might not be my favorite. Let's see. We got Hot Tones Pearl White in the Jacquard. We got a brush. We got a pencil. Prismacolor in a hot pink. We have some Clean Color Real Brush Zig Markers. I do like the colors of those markers. So that's a good, that's a good one. We got some Eco Line Duo Tip in um, Indigo and Deep Ochre. I like those colors. Fun little sticker. Let's see what else we got. We got some paper. So we have some Hot Press uh, 4x6 220 GSM. I'm assuming watercolor paper. And let's see, what did we get? Hot Press Move Circus Purpose for water-based media. A jacquard watercolor medium. Add shimmer and shine to your artwork with this unique watercolor medium. Okay, so that's super cool. We can add that into our watercolor stuff. I like that. Eco Line, a favorite among letterists. Sketch pencil in pink. Oval wash brush. Custom Zig Clean Color Real Brush Set. Water soluble brush pens offer striking marks and bright colors. Okay, so I like that these are water soluble because then we can use them kind of like a watercolor. And then, okay, good deal. All right, oh, fun. Okay, and there we go. That's our sketch box. Now, let's make something. <laughs> I think because I brought them out and talked about them, I'm going to um, grab a palette and maybe check out the Genzai Tambi and I'll be right back. And I think what I'm going to do, because I haven't done a video showing off the, um, the metal rip ruler, I want to, I think, rip this down a little bit and I could measure it off, but I just want to maybe show off what the rip ruler does since I haven't done a video on it after I introduced it because um, I'm pretty far out with my videos and I just want to do a little test here and see what can this do for us. Okay, so that's the jagged edge 
of this ruler and I just kind of too want to see how easy it is to use compared to my big rip ruler. Um, that's the jagged edge and you need enough room to grab and I'm just tearing towards the ruler and I'm just holding it down. I'm standing up so I can put my weight on my hand and just tearing it towards that and that actually worked rather easily. So let's just tear. I like, I like this side better than the jagged side, personally. Um, just because I like the edge it created. And this ruler is like a weapon. <laughs> I can see stabbing myself accidentally and having cuts all over my hands because it seems kind of dangerous. It's so sharp especially on that jagged edge. So it's definitely a ruler to be careful with. And I'm not measuring this out because I'm not making it this for anything specific. But I did want to at least give us a little test of the ruler since I haven't done that yet anyway. Okay, so there we go. So if you've seen me use the big rip ruler that I have, this was very similar. Comes up with a slightly different edge. Um, here's my big one. I could grab another piece of paper. I'm just using the Hanamule uh, watercolor paper because that's the paper I like to use for everything, but maybe just an, a little example. And then I can use this piece on something else that I create. But I like this uh, dual edge ripper because it's so big and I can do large pieces of art. It's not so sharp that it would injure me. <laughs> it gives a rather lovely edge also. Um, so just to kind of give you a comparison there of the two slightly um, edges that are just kind of slight edges. Um, so very similar. I'm getting um, almost an identical type of edge off of both rulers. Out of the two, I still prefer my dual edge ripper edge just for the pattern it created, um, but it's still super cool. It, um, and it's very large, so this is smaller and fits on my desk. But this is so sharp that I feel like I'd cut myself every time I use it, but I do like having it. It can hang up here um, on my thing that's my shelf that's in front of me here. So a little comparison of the two. I just thought I would share that since I hadn't done that yet. And now let's go ahead and make something with our little Kiritake colors. So usually with a granulating watercolor, which is what these are, I would just wet it down with plenty of water and I'd put that on the paper and that, you know what, let me grab that piece of paper back and let's just do a comparison of what they say to do versus how I would normally do it. So I'm just gonna wet these down. I'm also going to just put some water over here in my ceramic palette, which I shared last month. This is from the This Is Happiness Studio. And I'm just going to put some color in each of these and let them kind of do their thing. Because on the Kiritake thing, if you're looking on Amazon, it tells you to put the watercolor in some water and then kind of let it sit and separate and do the magical things that it's going to do. So this is not how I would normally use a... Um, a granulating color but I thought it might be interesting to at least try the way that I might normally do it versus how they say to do it and they say you know more water gives it more excitement so I'm just going to get a little of each of these over here And you know, the way they get these to granulate are different pigment sizes. So they separate out differently as you're painting with them and some sink up to the top and some sink to the bottom. And that's how you get some of the different 
colors and things that you get. All right, so then I'm also just going to um, kind of paint with it and see, is it better one way or the other? And the difference if we paint right out of the pan versus out of our um, palette that we've got sitting there. All right, so I'm going to let this kind of do its thing and do the same out of this set over here. So let me just set that to the side. And let's see what these are supposed to be. We've got aqua, Aurora Red, Pink, Orange, Blue, and Violet. So Aurora, like the Aurora Borealis, I guess. Like the Northern Lights, I think, might be what that's kind of referencing. And I had more water in there than I do pigment. So these are a little bit lighter. It's okay. Still going to be interesting to see what the get out of the two. And these I can almost see like some neon coming out of here. Like this looks like a neon pink out of here. I almost want to just come over here and dip some other stuff in to test it out a little bit. See what that might give us. That green with the blue and it's weird. It's called Aurora Orange. It's a little bit strange. <laughs> just kind of seeing. All right, let's see. I think I like that blue one a lot. It's got like a blue and an orange in it. That's kind of fun. All right, we're going to kind of let these do its thing. And let's look at this other one. It's not quite dry, but let's look and see what it's doing. So I'm going to actually let this one dry and then we can pair these two. So I'll be right back. These are still drying, but I kind of thought about this pearl white medium. What does it do if we just push that into one of our watercolors and then <laughs> maybe use a tiny bit of that? Let's just see what that even does. Are we going to get any pearlescent on here? Is it going to do something different? I just happened to think that I didn't pull that out to try it and that was the most exciting thing so I'm gonna add that to one piece and just <laughs> let it do its thing all right so now we have the two different pieces that are pretty dry I don't see any wet hanging out all right so this was the one where I did not allow it to really separate out into the water I just picked it up with a wet paintbrush and went for it and the colors are kind of muddy and kind of eh, eh. I don't know I don't love it um, the one where I added the pearl stuff to um, which I just put in a little box to clean up here um, but I added the uh, jacquard high tones pearl white in this one right here I can really see the extra little shimmer that that created so I think that's gonna be a fun little effect to be playing in with different watercolors um, but I don't like it just with putting the paintbrush right into the paint I did however absolutely love putting it with a whole bunch of water and letting it sit kind of like they recommend and then painting on here because even though it looked a little bit lighter and pastel as I was painting it once I got it onto the sheet of paper and it dried it looks just as vivid as this one and the colors are much much prettier and separated out better and look a lot prettier so this is definitely the way to go with those and I've got those little acrylograph pins that I thought maybe we could do some mark making and just see um, what they would do. And these are acrylic paint just like your Posca pins, but they've got that super lovely fine line. And you can see how easy that is to get that started. And so I'm kind of thinking that, you know, maybe I want to do some mark making 
and just play here a little bit. And, you know, usually I would do something like this in the gold. But it's kind of fun to maybe sometimes pick a different color just to see, you know, what you would get. Maybe do some pearls on this one. You know, you do gold or black normally with this, or at least I do. I could have put little leaves on that. That would have been pretty. All right, so I like that. Let's see what else we got here. And then to store these, you know, just like with the Poscas, I store them laying on their side. Um, over here in front of me on my cabinet, they let they store um, laid down. And I'll kind of pretend this is the gold and do some circles because <laughs> it's it's a kind of a goldish kind of color. It's probably not metallic, but we're going to give it that little flare. And then I might, because I like that, I might do, oh yeah, let's do some. Might not see it as vividly because it's not going to shine, but mark making is always fun. Okay, I like this light gray color. It's like a really light, kind of pretty. It's not white, but it's very similar and close to white with like maybe a little bit of a cream or a gray kind of tone. I like it. Like I really like it. Super fun. Okay. Just having a little play with the different materials that we got in here today. Let's see what else we got. We got some of this lovely eco line. Should see what that looks like. Maybe some dots. Oh. All right. That's a win. That's a win win here with this. Let's see. That's as good as a Posca paint pen. I like that enough. use that again so even though I'm not a marker girl markers are great for on top of watercolors um, so if you've got them or you get them in your box don't um, immediately think oh I'm never gonna use those because look how good they look on top of watercolor maybe I am a marker girl and I've just been discounting them and saying oh no it's a marker <laughs> yeah. always look at your supplies and think okay what could I do with that Ooh, okay, I like that. Okay, so that's super fun. I do like them for that. It's got like a, two different tips. Oh, yeah. Okay. These are a win. I'll, I'll give you that. The Eco Line Duo Tip ones look fantastic on the watercolors. <laughs> Especially for mark making and details and things that maybe maybe you're not going to get with a paintbrush as easily. Oh yeah, these are good. I like these. Now I have to look and see, did I get any more of these? And do I have any other colors? Because <laughs> might be the new favorite thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's just call this one good for today. I've just done a whole little play there with that. What a big art stash of stuff we had today. I hope you enjoyed seeing the different books that I had to show you. If you don't get any of them besides this one, totally worth it. Best book, best find. Um, so I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different goodies this month, playing with a few to see what they do. Definitely loving the Kuretake granulating colors. Those are super fun. You know, I love watercolors that do tricks and those are nice and tricky. <laughs> 
definitely wet them down um, to use them first because they separate out and they're much prettier. Hope you had fun this month checking out the art haul and I'll see you guys next month.